Hello everyone. Good evening. So we were solving the BSGS sample questions, right? Now we are at question number nine. All of the eight questions have been uploaded previously. So please look into them. If you have any doubts, do let us know. All right. Now this sum might look like a sum and quantity equations, but actually it's not. It's a sum and complex numbers. Right. So what is the equation given? Let us look into that first. It's x square plus x plus one equal to zero. Right. Now this is a very common equation because if I multiply it by one minus x, what do I get? I have zero on the right hand side, so I am basically getting x cube minus one equal to zero, right? Because I hope you remember the formula. Now this is nothing but x cube equal to one, so the solutions of this are cube roots of unity, right? I hope you remember it, cube roots of unity. So these will be one omega and omega square. Now, what are the properties of it? Two properties were omega cube was equal to one, and then I had one plus omega plus omega square. This was equal to zero. All right. Now, what is the multiplication factor that we introduced? We introduced one minus x, right? So that value corresponds to x equal to one because we introduced one minus x. So what will be the roots of x square plus x plus one? This equation will have roots. Omega and omega square. I hope you understood this point because we introduced this term one minus x. The solution of one minus x is x equal to one. So that was the part where one came from. Now for the other two roots of unity, which are omega and omega square, they will be the solutions of the other part. So omega and omega square. Now without loss of generality, because otherwise we can just switch, right? We can take alpha equal to omega. And beta equal to omega square. Okay. Once you have established that, the rest of the sum just becomes an application of exponents, which you have learned in class eight, I think. So how do we do this? How do we finish the sum? Half of the sum is, in fact, the heavy lifting portion of the sum is already done. Now alpha to the power twenty twenty four plus whatever power maybe doesn't matter. These are just given so because you are appearing for the exam in twenty twenty four. So this is omega to the power twenty twenty four plus omega to the power twenty forty eight. Oh, I'm sorry. It will be four four zero four eight, right? Because it's twice. So twice we are getting four zero four eight. Now we will use these two properties. So twenty twenty four the numbers don't add up to any multiple of three, right? So they are not divisible by three. Since they are not divisible by three, I'll look for the nearest one. That will be omega into two zero two two, right? Because they add up to six into omega square. Plus four plus four plus eight is sixteen. So again, that is not divisible by three. If we have to bring back to fifteen, we will have four zero four seven into omega. I hope you understood it. We're just adjusting the factors to multiples of three. So this is omega to the power twenty twenty two. So it will be and if I divide by three, it will be six seventy four cube into omega square plus if we divide this one by three, I'll have omega into thirteen. Four nine cube into omega. Now we can interchange these powers, right? So what will I get? I'll have omega cube to the power six seventy four into omega square. This is a very detailed calculation I am showing. You don't need to do it in this detail in the exam because it's a competitive exam, not a school exam, right? So after this, what will we get? We'll get omega cube equal to one because we are using this property. So by property one. We have omega square plus omega. Now, if alpha to the power twenty twenty four plus beta to the power twenty twenty four equal to omega square plus omega, this I can write it as zero. Ah, uh, we can use this property one, right? We can use this property now. So we had one. Minus, or let us just write it a bit fashionably. So we have one plus omega square plus omega minus one. That will do, right? So zero minus one equal to minus one. So the answer will be minus one, and minus one is in option C. Right. So again, quite a simple problem. Uh, these type of problems are given in such a way that it might appear to be. From a particular chapter, but it is actually not from the chapter. So it appears to be a quality question question, but you can easily solve it via complex numbers. All right, use the cube root of unity, use those properties, and you can solve this sum easily. Okay, so I'll end this video here. 
and we'll meet again in question 10